This episode was sponsored by Skillshare. Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to a, a thing. I am going to be attempting to build a guitar from scratch, from raw, raw lumber, in... Well, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, but uh, this is gonna be... This is gonna be a doozy. Now, the whole point of this uh, entire exercise is to raise money for the British Red Cross uh, DEC Ukraine appeal. Uh, all Super Chat income is going to be donated to that, and the guitar is currently, the guitar that doesn't exist yet, is currently uh, being raffled off, and uh, all of the proceeds from that is also going to the same place. Uh, the world is, has never been perfect, and but what is happening right now is it's it's messed up in in, in many different ways, and uh, it's not the only messed up thing around, but it's something that uh, I can actually it's happening now, and it's something that we can do a little bit about. Uh, now, in the background, I've got, uh, at least to start with, Mrs. Bunn, say hi. Hi. Uh, later on in the day, Talitha will be joining us, and then later, later, uh, if I'm still going, uh, Tom from Crimson is going to be coming over. We've, I have done that crazy thing, and that is prepared. The body and the neck, the body is two pieces of this torrified sycamore, smells great. The neck is a matching piece, flamed, torrified sycamore. The top was a gift from a fan, and uh, is flamed redwood, and is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, this is gonna be one of the first things that I have to do, is joining that. It has resin pockets, which is par for the course for redwood. And then we've got a very beautiful flamed ebony fretboard. I'm not sure if you can quite see that there. The thing is, once that's oiled, etc., the figuring mostly disappears. But uh, yeah, I figured it should be fun. And finally, it is a baritone, which actually caused some trouble. We did a uh, we did a poll where I mistakenly said, hey, should we do baritone or fender scale or etc.? And everybody chose baritone. And then I spent uh, a few hours on the weekend driving around trying to find strings. Uh, that was fun, wasn't it? Matt from House of Tone donated these pickups and uh, he custom made them for this build uh, and they are incredible. And I thought, hey, that would best match the X-Chrome finish on the hardware. And I was completely wrong. The nickel, while more silvery, it doesn't, brushed nickel doesn't match the X-Chrome closely enough. So, Mr. Mark Jennings, who's just donated 20 pounds, he also sent me these, which he just happened to have, and he's donated these again. He's also donated these for the cause. So this is the second unboxing of a set of uh, House of Tone pickups, and they're exactly the same. But chrome! So, uh, there we go. Um, I, I tried to plan ahead, and I got most of the way there. The first stage of this build is going to be gluing up the top. So that's jointing, or drying while I move on. Also, the body. Once that's done, we'll move on to the neck. This here is the shooting board. Absolutely integral part of, of life as a luthier. The wood sits on there, the plane goes. And it helps keep everything nice and square and sorted. Now, before you start, you need to figure out where exactly you want, which side is going to be the top. Okay, so that's my top section. So that plane is currently set to take a relatively fine cut. I'm going to start with something a bit, a bit coarser. Uh, 
I've gone in with my uh, low angle sort of jack, it's a number five-ish size. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. It touches nicely in the middle. And if you can pull it together with your fingers like that, it's probably okay. But I'm now gonna go over to the finer plane, which is my number seven. Super chat. Uh, um, I'm not quite sure about how to pronounce this, but I should go with it. T Marcinia KPL. Okay. And saying greetings from Poland. Thank you for the charity build. That's an absolute pleasure. You guys currently have about 1.7 million refugees trying to get in, and uh, I suspect that a large part of this money is going to be going to. Uh, to or through Poland. Uh, I need to thank you for what you guys are doing. Uh, a super chat donation from the junk and the junker, uh, and he says, but he said there's no need to read it out loud. Mm -hmm. So he just wants to donate. The junker. That is a very cool name. In fact, if that isn't a, a CBeebies TV show already, it really should be. <laughs> when you're planing something like this, you push on the front of the plane, then as you get down to, down to the middle, you push your, the tension onto the back, and that means the blade is following the section that you've already made flat, thus making the, thus making the whole board, hopefully, perfectly flat. We're sorted. There's a little bit of a, yeah, there's a little bit of a shadow because this piece is thicker than the other. But that ain't no gap. Mrs. Bunn made absolutely sure while I was frantically running around making sure everything else was in, uh, was sorted, that I would have coffee and, uh, and milk because today is going to be, today's going to be a day. So, there we go. Okay, glue. Let the, uh, let the mess begin. Start off by putting the glue on, then rub it together. This not only helps create a small vacuum, which helps to stop it from slipping, it obviously spreads the glue Nicely, very gently. A little bit of tension there. And then finally, we put another clamp on the top, and this is going to stop it from pinging open. Now I've got a wedge, a ledge there, so I stick a hammer underneath. There we go. Job number one done. <laughs> I was expected to say, it's only been 15 minutes. No, it's uh, 25. Just as an informational thing for you guys, in a normal seven or eight hour full stream build, that is about how much we do in a normal entire build in, in Super Chat revenue. Um, that's pretty incredible. Same exact process, but with the uh, with the body blank. Now this was uh, cut from a a length of plank. It isn't book matched necessarily, but that doesn't mean that we don't have the ability to figure out which way looks best. I need a vice here. Damn it! It's almost like I need a new workbench. This is awkward, this is far too high, but uh, essentially my, my uh, Atom Mini Stream Deck is over there near the vise. While the plane is set to take a large cut, I'm going to leave that as is. That's probably not perfectly jointed, but uh, it's flat. 
and then I'll go back later once I've set it down a little bit. Okay, listen to that. That is the sound of a pretty good joint. Whether it's pretty good all the way along or not, I don't know. No, it's not. There we go. That there is a, near as I can tell it, pretty perfect joint. Again with the shadow. Yeah, there's no rock, there's no nonsense, there's no issues. That calls for a celebratory snifter of coffee. Gently put the wood in the vise. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here because that could twist things if the wood wasn't perfectly flat. The ends are floating over and that means I'll be able to apply two vices to the end while it's all nice and steady. I use Alkaline Professional uh, wood glue. Now, same sort of thing, you don't want to starve the joint, you don't want to put too little glue in, but you also don't want to have too much. Now, put it on. Because I'm in a rush, I'm spreading it around with the body. Without knocking a camera, I'm gonna move this out the way. We are 45 minutes into the build. We've got the top glued, we've got the body glued, and I am sitting here looking at El Neck Black, a Rooney. Okay, so this is a, we didn't, we did not design the headstock. I've got three aside tuners and uh, I'll find a, I'll, I'll probably use a, uh, just a standard PRS template and then adjust accordingly. But what I do have an issue with is the length of the neck. See, that's my, that's my truss rod. And it's a couple of inches too short, which is actually not too bad. Um, I could put in some of that. Okay, Alex Simpson say, hi, my partner's dad has gone missing in Kharkiv. Uh, on the off chance that anyone watching has contact with uh, Grontovoy Vladimir Ivanovich, please ask him to get in contact with his daughter as we're all very worried. I'm gonna say that one again. Uh, my partner's dad has gone missing in Kharkiv. I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sure. Uh, Kharkiv, okay. Uh, on the off chance that anyone watching has contact with Grontonovoy Vladimir Ivanovich, please ask him to get in touch with his daughter as we're all very worried. This is a live and developing crisis that is happening now to real people. And it f***ing sucks. Uh, okay. Base truss rods, far too long. Guitar truss, rod, truss, truss rods, okay-ish. Uh, I am going to put in some carbon fiber stiffening rods. I sincerely hope I have a four millimeter cutter here to use. So we've got some nice flame up towards the top there, but well, not nice, just okay-ish flame there. Now, the neck pocket is gonna go underneath the, the neck pickup. Last thread's gonna be around about there. So essentially what I want is my stiffening rods to be there-ish, probably closer in. Now I'm also not going to route my truss rod bang down the center of this block because that would just be a waste of wood. This is the bit that requires thought because if I mess this up, the whole thing, the whole thing is, uh, is gone. Uh, now this is a template set that Crimson sells. So that's my nut line. That's the nut width roughly. And what I'm doing is I'm using this 
because unlike normally, I'm actually gonna try and get the headstock in one piece because I don't want to take the time to glue anything extra on. So that then allows me to work out where my center line is going to be. And then from that, I can go and I'll know how wide my neck blank is gonna be. These are carbon fiber stiffening rods and we're gonna have them go just alongside. Okay, I'm gonna be using that boy later. So I've got the right size router cutters. I've got a center line. I know where I need to be putting all of my holes. So it's just a case of uh, figuring it out. Now I've got some masking tape on both sides telling me where the center uh, of the router is because the only time I ever use this is when I'm routing along a center line and that is actually <laughs> close enough. So now it's just a case of locking these off. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're good. That is centered. We're not quite plugged in yet, nor are we on, which is good. And I wanna go nine millimeters down. So I'm just setting nine millimeters on that. And now that's moved, I'm, I've got a depth stop. Okay, so these are gonna go on either side of the truss rod. Let's change the route a bit. Uh, I mustn't forget to release the death stop. That'll do. Let's lock. I'm assuming people were shouting at me for not wearing goggles. Yeah, that was a, that was yeah. a theme. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. This whole system here is so good at stopping stuff flying and I'm, very, I'm holding myself behind the guard. Goggles just tend to get him away. All right then. Whew. Okay, now I need to square out the end there, but the bit where the Allen key goes, that is also slightly wider than the quarter inch or six mil hole that everything else fits into. Just a little way in.
and square it off. Using my thumb as a guide. Now, torrified sycamore and torrified maple is great to work, cuts easily, smells delicious and all that. It also does chip more than other timbers, so you need to be aware when you're routing that uh, you could have some issues. Yeah, that one, a little bit longer. And we've just gone over £2,000 on the raffle. Ah, okay, the truss rod I'm going to take out for now, but I am going to glue in the, uh, the carbon fibre stiffening rods. Now, PPE. People shout at me for not wearing PPE often enough. Uh, however, in certain situations where I know it's absolutely essential, it's absolutely essential. I'm about to spooge a bunch of super glue into a closed tight slot and then hammer something almost the exact same size into it. The super glue is going to want to shoot upwards. I have had super glue in my eyeballs on two separate occasions. It is to be avoided. Uh, if you ever do get super glue in your eyeballs, don't blink. The angels will come for you. Uh, if you blink, you will glue your eyelids together and that would be a hospital trip. Uh, if you keep your eyes open, the super glue does not cure because it's on something wet and you can stick your finger in your eye and put it out and it'll just, it's nasty. But it's better than blinking. Don't get any blinking super glue in your eyes. These things find their own, they find their own way, don't they? Good, no super glue in my eyes. Did I get any of you? That's a really bad joke. Really, really bad joke. Okay, I need some sand pepper. So we've now got the neck partially marked out. I need to work out the width, etc. The way that I would normally do this, I would normally cut a straight line all the way along and then just use, use a hand plane, plane that and then glue on side wings to uh, make it easier to get the edges uh, square and, uh, and correct. In this particular build, I'm not doing that. Uh, these are back in stock now. Um, for, I, I know that during the super chats, sorry, during the questions in the live streams recently, people have been asking for the protractors. They are back in stock. They arrived uh, a couple of days ago. So I'm holding it up on the nut line and working out exactly where the end of the neck is gonna be. You then measure the end of the neck. Off the center line, 29 and a half, 29 and a half.
So that is now marked out. Should we design a headstock quickly, people? Uh, yeah, this is one of the earlier templates and the, our laser hasn't quite burned through, so I'm gonna have to just uh, knock those out. All right, so this is a standard PRS style headstock. I'm really only using it as a start off starting point. And the most important thing for me is the position of the tuners. And I find myself entirely and utterly without inspiration for this shape. Uh, we are currently at the end of hour two. We have jointed the top, we have jointed the body, we have routed out the truss rod and routed out the two carbon fiber stiffening rods. We've worked out the dimensionality of the neck and uh, we're just about to start on the headstock design. This guitar is being raffled off. 100% of the proceeds after fees and stuff, unfortunately, is going to the same appeal. Uh, and that is the same with the Super Chat. So uh, over a thousand pounds in Super Chat so far. And the raffle? The raffle is at 2,595. Beautiful. So we're already at about three and a half thousand pounds raised for charity. This is incredible. Two hours in. And it's these sort of hard lines that uh, that this doesn't quite work with, in my opinion. So it's just a case of offsetting. Yeah, that's roughly a third of the width there, which is a nice, which is a nice feel, and then. There we go. Easy. Let's do this in pen. You can't really see what's going on at the moment. There we go, that's better. So yeah, you've, you've got uh, the offset uh, curve of the horns, etc. And to keep that forward momentum going, I want it to be longer on the top edge. It could be mirrored but I think it would look a bit weird. The problem is we've also got the symmetricality of these two points here and the symmetricality of the uh, six tuners. So I'm, I am not offended by that. Headstock design is really not easy. The fact that people are building and creating and uh, falling in love with workshops uh, is one of the reasons why I keep on doing this. Feel like we're making progress, don't you? Oh, I love coffee. Oh. Yes, okay. Okay, so I've left one side flat. I'm just gonna quickly draw out a, a break angle. So essentially, I want the headstock to be about 15 at the end. There's a roundabout where my nut is. And that there is my brake angle. Draw the thickness of where the headstock is gonna be. Let's go back to the bandsaw and um, carry on cutting.
so it's always it's always scarier to cut that brake angle when you don't have a flat edge to work with. It's much easier to tape the uh, bevel back on and then use that to, to get the rest of the shape sorted. I'm fairly sure I've designed that exact headstock in the past on uh, maybe the guitar I built with April Wilkerson while April Wilkerson was at Crimson. Anyway, all these people who get to watch watch videos. Did you see? Did you see that? That I mean, that corner just chipped off. I tell you, and it doesn't matter because it's going to get rounded off anyway. Torrified wood is very chippy. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, that's good and done. Now, while we're here, we might as well we might as well go in and drill the truss rod access just for fun. So that's where that is. Now, so I've got my Fano drill bits here, uh, longer and uh, beautiful. Start in straight. And then bring the angle down. All right, I'm going to stop there. These are very, very, they've got a very steep helicoidal shape there. Uh, much steeper than these Star M, which means that the drill bits, when they go through to the other side of a cavity, they want to rip themselves through. Uh, they're fantastic drill bits, like... I am so lucky I own a set of these. Sort of draw a shape I want. And we're going to end up with something shield-like, I suppose, if it goes according to plan. This is an inside ground gouge. Now I could have set up a router to do this, but that would have taken an extra five or 10 minutes where just doing it by hand should be, should be absolutely fine. It's so chippy. And it's not the same as being chipper. Just a little bit of a calf. <sighs> Remember, this is going to be behind a um, a little plate. That's it, the center line is everything. Where we currently stand is, I need to formalize the width and the shape and the dimensions of the shaft of the neck, essentially. Okay, option number one, I put it in a vise and I plane it by hand. The other option is I 
take my fretboard and I cut the fretboard down to the exact dimensions I want it to be, glue that in place and then use the fretboard as a router, uh, as a router template for, for the neck. Now the issue I have with that is what's happening at this end here. Um, I need to, at the end of the neck, go down and cut that away. So this a section of it is going to have to be planed in any case. It's going to be a combination of the two. I'm going to use the hand plane on the end and make the thing and then do the thing and the stuff and the nonsense and the chaos. Cool. Two hours, 45 minutes in. Okay, so we've got, I'm down to the line where I need to be all the way along, and that looks really nice now. Now the other issue I've got here is the grain is going in there and out that way. So, not ideal. I am aware I need a new bench. There we go. That's our deal. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to plane down one side of this fretboard, get that square, and we'll go from there. Alrighty. I do have some gluing time to take into consideration, i.e. I need to glue, we're making this into a hollow body guitar because hey, it's a one day build so I had to complicate it a little bit. The question is, do I carry on with the neck, glue the fretboard on and then move on to the body and while the fretboard is gluing, make the body Yes, that's what I do. Question answered, thank you very much for your help. I really appreciate it. So I've now got a nice straight edge along one side of the fretboard. The grain is all over the place, so that's fine. Um, we're back at the point where, where I need to make sure that I'm thinking. Okay. So that's where the end of the fretboard is and a little bit after that we're going to cut out a wedge for the pickup which is cool so what I need to do is put that just a little bit over the edge of the fretboard now I'm lining up the side that I've squared off perfectly as far as it will go remember I've not planed up this side there's going to be some excess there. And that then gives me and now we've done that. A crimson guitar's straight edge. And if I'm right, that should be a nice straight line all the way down and giving me the neck I require. Let's just double check whether they're not quite straight, but still fairly straight ruler. Perfect. I'm just marking out 
where I want to cut at the end of the fretboard. And that is now, that is now good. So I've drawn where I want my nut to be on the, uh, on the guitar. This is a non-standard way of marking out this. It's absolutely non-standard, but uh, yeah. I would normally use a template, but I don't have the time to make a template. So that's my nut and uh, we're good. And with that knowledge, I can then measure and just confirm. Yeah, okay. Where I've marked is a little bit wider than I want, which is perfect. This whole video was sponsored by Skillshare. I am a fan of the platform. I'm a fan of learning. I'm a fan of making and creativity. And if you are too, which I suspect is the case because, hey, you're watching this, you need to check it out. Now, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare. And uh, I heartily recommend you do exactly that. The other day I had to, I had to interview a man who was auctioning off a 59 Les Paul. Amongst a bunch of other very, very cool guitars, I have no experience interviewing people really. I talk to the camera a lot. So I went to Skillshare, I checked out a class by Chris Brooker uh, called How to Film an Interview. I learned a lot, I used it, I filmed an interview and that video is doing quite well at the moment. Probably not because of my interviewing skills, but mainly because there's the words 59 Liz Paul in the title, but you know, done, sorted. I, I, I had the class, learned some things, immediately put it into action, and it meant that I created a better video that's doing quite well at the moment, and I got to spend a day with a 59 Liz Paul while not worrying about the interview. It was great, I had to worry about my playing instead. Chances are, if you want to learn something, Skillshare has you covered. There are classes from accountancy to web design to photography to videography to marketing and pencil drawing to... It goes on. Ad free. Check it out. I personally would appreciate it. I'm nearly there. I'm running my fingers along the board underneath the plane. Just to keep me steady. But I think that's there. There we go. That's ideal. It matches up on both sides up to about halfway up the neck, and the rest will be cleaned away by the router. Center line, center line. Okay. Onto the nut. And yes, look, I'm using this marking knife. Um, let's try not to get my head in the way. Cool. Yeah, that was a gift uh, from a, uh, a knife maker, fan of the channel. Ronaldknives.com. I'm gonna mark out and cut two fret slots. I tend to prefer cutting slots when the fretboard is attached to a neck. Everything is easier. But I also want to have a locating pin and that is best hidden inside of a fret slot. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do this. Everything about this build is a little bit strange at the moment, but that's fine. Now the fretboard is being held against two bench dogs there. Okay, that's one. Uh, 
I need to look at my plans. It's a 685 millimeter scale length. All right, we're done. We're all good. That's uh, that's excellent. So now what I need to do is mark out a couple that I want to cut. I'll sort of make it down towards the bottom of the neck. There. And this is where a high quality protractor is absolutely essential. I'm not going to even cut these slots. I know exactly where they're going to go. I'll just drill the hole, the locating pins, where they are. Okay, so I am now taking this and I'm drilling down through where the fret is going to go so that I've got locating uh, absolutely perfection. There we go. My nut is cut. The end of my fretboard is cut. My locating pins are drilled. Okay, truss rod in place. Now, you see that flex there? That is necessary. This is a dual action truss rod, but you have to take some masking tape and uh, essentially two, just over an inch, inch and a half, I suppose, sections rolled over backwards so the sticky side is out. And uh, at this point on this one, I've got quite a chunky gap. The last thing you want to do, or have at least, is a truss rod that when it is loose, i.e. not under tension, which is sometimes required, or just, you know, it, does, it isn't needed to be tight all the time, that will rotate. These things push it down against the uh, back of the truss rod, the, the functional section of it, and uh, it'll stop rattle. Now, if you do have a rattly truss rod, if this is an issue, then all you need to do is tighten it uh, to a point where it uh, tightens itself against the fretboard and uh, you should be fine. Here we go. <coughs> Let's go. And of course I've put the uh, I've put the locating pins in again before I put the glue on. And they always get in the damn way. But it's fine. One day I will learn from my mistakes. One day. Not this day, not the next day. Is this the same one day that you did last time? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm, I'm skipping ahead a bit of the Super Chats to read Lisa Harshbogus. Lisa. Uh, who's sent $49.99. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, dollars. Thanks for having a community build section for GGBO. I'm letting go of my competitive side <laughs> and giving my entry fee to help these people. My heart is broken by what is happening. Thank you again for everything, Ben. Okay, Lisa, uh, get in touch if you would still like to compete. We would like to uh, cover your fee. There are, um, we have had donations uh, specifically to cover the entire fee of people who uh, who either don't have the money or, it occurs to me in your case, um, have used it for an even better thing. So, uh, yes, uh, we, I would like to cover your entire entrance fee. Uh, so give us a shout. 
Now, hopefully, this works. I completely pre-planned, but they're a little bit longer than I normally do, and there is a chance that they will uh, snap as I do this. Yeah, but that's what thread cutters are for. Yes, but then it's a flat head, and uh, yeah. Perfection. <laughs> uh, okay, so yes, Talitha, is absolutely correct. Fret and cutter. I sincerely hope that that is not a bird being eaten by my cat next door in the forest. But, I mean, he did go that way. We'll see. Uh, okay. What's a bird trying to chase your cat away? <laughs> uh, potentially, yeah. So this is a 12 degree, a 12 inch radius uh, block with cork on it. Um, I am going to use that as a clamping call. Uh, I'm just cutting some sections of cardboard here to go down the middle. Uh, this is more to stop the call from breaking than anything else. Now, because the call has got a, a radius in it, it means that I am clamping down on the edges of the fretboard alongside the neck and that is exactly what I wanted to be doing. So that works there. That's down the centre. And that's Jasper, I'm not sure what he's barking at. Probably telling the cat to leave those poor birds alone. So at this stage, we're three hours and eight minutes into this build, and uh, we have glued up the body blank and it is ready to go. We have glued up the jointed, uh, the flamed redwood top. I have uh, shaped the neck. I have installed a truss rod. Yes, I installed a truss rod. I just had a slight panic there. And carbon fiber stiffening rods. We have shaped the fretboard, got the width down, etc. We have created a, a brake angle on the headstock and glued the fretboard in. That glue is now curing and I'm gonna go and put this off side. We have got a raffle going for this guitar. All of the money from that after fees is going to Ukraine via the British Red Cross UK, Ukraine, Ukraine Appeal, which is being doubled by the UK government. And that figure currently stands at... £3,682 <laughs> with 1,473 tickets sold. That's incredible. The raffle is going up for two weeks, pretty much. And uh, after that, somebody will own this guitar. And we are also donating all of the Super Chad revenue after fees. Um, and uh, that currently stands at an insane... 2,000 pounds. That's like five times more than we've ever ever taken on Super Chats. It's incredible. And uh, it is all being doubled by the UK government. So this is this is incredible. Um, There's quite a few chats saying you're actually past hour four, Ben. 11, 12, one, two. Dang, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of episode one of this uh, of this epic charity build series. We live streamed it. We have decided to split it into probably four short videos to get as many people watching as possible before the raffle ends so we can raise as much money as possible. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you very much for your support. All of those who supported through, uh, through Super Chats and through entering the raffle already, uh, you guys are amazing. Those of you who didn't see the live stream, well, 
I hope you're enjoying the build so far. There is a lot more to come. Oh yes. Click like, subscribe. Go and donate to uh, your Ukraine appeal of choice. Or enter the raffle. This guitar could be yours.